My name is Chris, and today we're taking a look at the Hegel V10 Phono Preamplifier. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! This video is sponsored by Dearborn Music. As a small business owner myself, I strive to spend my money at independent stores, especially when it comes to my record collecting. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me mention Dearborn Music in the past. They have been my favorite large record store for a very long time, and for good reason. I'm able to find every new release I'm looking for in stock, and there's always a massive influx of used records coming through the door every single week, seemingly by the truckload. They have every genre you could possibly want, including many of the hard-to-find releases that sell out everywhere else. If you're from Michigan, I would say that Dearborn Music is worth the drive from anywhere in the state. If you are not from Michigan, I would say that Dearborn Music is worth the drive from anywhere outside the state. However, I realize that this is not always feasible with time and budget constraints, not to mention the current price of gasoline. And because of this, Rick from Dearborn Music has extended an incredibly generous discount code all the way to Halloween of this year. Simply enter the code VINYLATTACK, all one word, when checking out online for 15% off of your order. It's that simple. But what if you're local and shop there already, or you'd like to start? You can still take advantage of this great offer by visiting DearbornMusic.net to place your order online and pick it up in the store. Okay, but what if you're too far away to pick up your records in store? What can I do about that? How about free shipping on every order over $50? If you don't have a local record store, as perhaps you live too far from one, or the one near you just sucks, do yourself a favor and try out Dearborn Music. Whether in person or online, you'll find that working with people who know the industry inside and out will be a much bigger help in your record collecting journey than mindlessly scrolling through some boring online mega retailer who doesn't value your business in near the same way. So help keep local record stores alive and visit DearbornMusic.net and use the code VINYLATTACK, all one word, for 15% off your entire order and free shipping over $50. Quality vinyl playback can be a very tricky thing. While it is certainly possible to purchase a modestly priced turntable and integrated amplifier to hook directly to a pair of speakers and have a very enjoyable sound, some people demand more from their vinyl playback. That's more than likely why you're here today. But what makes that tricky? Well, each piece in the vinyl playback chain is, or should be, very sensitive in nature. After all, we're taking an incredibly small diamond attached to a tiny rod that involves some magnets, some long wire, and a bit of rubber in a case that is meant to trace the bumps and grooves of the record with the intent of having them amplified to an amazing degree to produce sound. This in and of itself is always a tricky thing to manage well. One of the biggest hurdles to overcome in this chain is unwanted noise. From the shape of the stylus itself, to the cantilever material, to the type of cartridge, be it moving magnet or moving coil, outside noise and interference is inevitable. Add to that a phono stage which takes this signal sent by the cartridge and boosts it upwards of 60 decibels in some cases, and you're just asking for hiss and possible distortion. Enter the Hegel V10. Hegel, well known for their amazing noise reduction properties in their amplification, has set out to tackle the aforementioned noise problem found in vinyl preamplifiers as well. The chassis of the V10, which is divided into two symmetrical compartments, cleverly separates the dual power supply inputs from the other amplification circuitry, eliminating that potential interference problem. The supplied linear, low-noise, analog AC power supply features a large, custom-designed E-Core transformer that is placed in its own housing that makes this possible and terminates into two separate ends that make use of this internal balanced design. On the back, you'll find gold-plated terminals, balanced XLR outputs, an oversized grounding screw, which is quite handy, and separate inputs for both moving magnet and moving coil cartridges that feed into equally silent amplifier circuits. It makes use of ultra-low noise, discrete JFET transistors for both cartridge types, which Hegel claims makes the V10 completely silent. They may indeed be correct. Symmetrical sets of dip switches gives you the ability to select the various types of gain, capacitance, and impedance loads, along with a subsonic filter option placed in an accessible area as opposed to being hid underneath the chassis like some other offerings on the market. These switches, unlike many I've encountered, flip up and down more like a light switch as opposed to sliding up and down, which makes them easier to operate. When using the XLR outputs, you'll find that the moving magnet gain has settings of 40, 45, 50, and 52 dB, and the moving coil gain is 60, 65, 70, and 72 dB. Using the single-ended RCA outputs, these numbers drop some. You can expect 34, 39, 44, and 46 dB from a moving magnet, and 54, 59, 64, and 66 dB from a moving coil. Either way, though, this is a very usable range for pretty much any type of cartridge you may have. 
Adding to the gain flexibility, the moving coil load impedance is freely adjustable between 33 and 550 ohms or a fixed 47 kilo ohm. Not to be outdone, the moving magnet load capacitance comes in at 100, 147, 220, 247, 320, 420, and 460 picofarads at 47 kilo ohms. Essentially, you can set this phono preamp up however you would like. I could go on to tell you about the 2 Hz to 20 kHz frequency response, the insanely low 0.005% total harmonic distortion on the moving magnet side, and the 0.009% in the moving coil, and the subsonic filter which removes 3 dB at 20 Hz, 18 dB at 10 Hz, and 36 dB down all the way at 5 Hz, but those figures are easy enough to look up and don't make for great video. You're probably more interested in how this unit sounds. I know I was. Using an Ortophone Black LVB and the Ortophone Quintet Black for my moving magnet and moving coil options respectively, I connected the V10 to a Rotel MA6000 integrated amplifier that I have in home for review, as well as my own Hegel H90 integrated that I've had for some years now. Right from the get-go, it was obvious that Hegel had achieved their goal of a low to zero noise phono preamplifier. The pitch black background makes it extremely easy to pick out nuanced sounds as well as enjoying more of the lively and robust ones. Listening to my copy of the original Dune soundtrack once again, the wide array of various instruments, sounds, and placements would certainly point out any of the holes in the Hegel's armor, but from my vantage point, I really didn't see many. Bass was extremely tight and well-defined. The top end was crystal clear with zero harshness, and the mid-range, where most of the frequencies we listen to live, was well-balanced and very neutral in its presentation. The soundstage of the V10 was extremely wide and equally impressive, so much so that sweeping and panning instruments could easily make you turn your head to try and pick out their location with closed eye listening. There was excellent depth to the soundstage as well, making for a more engaging listening experience, particularly when focusing on instrument placement. The orchestral nature of the soundtrack took full advantage of these traits. Moving over to some John Coltrane, I found the same pleasant results with the Kraft recording's one-step pressing of Lush Life. John's saxophone had texture and liveliness to it, as it should. The acoustic bass filled out the low registers without ever being boomy or muddy, and the sparkling top end of the cymbals had the appropriate amount of sizzle with no distortion whatsoever and superb decay. If accuracy and neutrality were what Hegel were after, I would say they found their mark. Playing through a multitude of other albums during my time with the Hegel, this same excellent performance was found throughout. Male and female vocals had enough forward presence to make them stand out while never competing with any of the other instruments abound. Drums, cymbals, guitars, strings, horns, and any other various instruments I played all sat in their own space in the wide soundstage that Hegel produced. Setting up the V10 was a breeze, even when using the dip switch format found on the back. Generally speaking, I tend to dislike these types of switches, but I had no trouble using them here. The configuration options were conveniently printed on the bottom of the unit, which makes it quite handy to not need a set of printed instructions or a cell phone nearby when all you want to do is simply adjust your preamp. Something that you may quite easily overlook, though, is the understated design element that Hegel chose. Sticking with her simplistic Scandinavian motif, you'll find nothing more than the company brand name and a power button on the front. That's it. If you're a fan of this sort of look, it will fall right in line with your preferences, but I'd say that even if you like something a little more flashy, setting the V10 off to the side with its de-emphasized exterior will make it all the easier to focus on the components that draw your eye more. But with all those positive elements abound, there were a few things with this preamp that I didn't much care for, and I would be remiss if I didn't make them known to you. First and foremost, ironically enough, is the symmetrical layout on the back of the unit that I mentioned I liked before. While I very much enjoy having separate inputs for both moving magnet and moving coil options, and a centrally located ground screw is a fine choice, having the left and right outputs so far apart is problematic to say the very least in my experience. If you're spending $1,500 on a phono preamp, there is a good chance that you'll want to employ quality cables to this setup. I have a host of different AudioQuest cables in-house for review, as well as in my own personal collection, and I was unable to use any of them due to the increased spacing on the back of the Hagel. Where the AudioQuest cables bind together to form the Y just didn't give me enough slack and led to my immediate frustration. While I would imagine that there are other cables out there that don't have quite as narrow a spacing, AudioQuest is a large company, and I would imagine that there are many of us out there who won't be able to benefit from using these cables in this application. Unfortunately, I still don't have any quality XLR cables in my house, so I was unable to not only hear the sonic difference, but to see how much easier it would be to connect those on the wider spacing on back. I definitely need to remedy this soon. Those amongst you who don't care about upgraded cables or perhaps don't hear a difference certainly won't have an issue with this, but for the rest of us, specifically myself, I was quite disappointed that I was relegated to use the basic RCA interconnects that I had laying around the house. 
somehow using an interconnect that might be used on something like a PlayStation to connect a fine piece of audio equipment just didn't sit right, and I feel this is a pretty large oversight on Hegel's behalf. The next item isn't a problem, just a sonic difference being compared directly to my EAT Eaglo Petite. When using the Rotel Integrated Amplifier, I was quite aware that the height of the soundstage had a much more narrow band than that of the EAT. It was almost as if the V10 took the soundstage and pressed it together on the top and bottom to get the exceptionally wide soundstage that it has. I would say that the EAT did indeed have a little more record and background noise, but it was also a little livelier and once again taller in its soundstage. Horns and vocals were simply more full and lush through the EAT when connected to the Rotel and certainly more holographic. The V10 performed well here to be sure, but it just wasn't quite as dynamic. Connecting the Hegel V10 to my Hegel H90 integrated amp, things changed right away though. Perhaps this is simply a case of Hegel products being more synergistic with one another, but I found that the EAT's soundstage height advantage wasn't as large when played through my H90. In this instance, the wide soundstage of the V10 was incredibly apparent, and when removing most of the height advantage of the EAT, it becomes a much less obvious choice and much more of a personal one. There are certainly those of you who will value a wider soundstage more than a tall one and a more neutral tone overall. This is where that personal preference comes into play. If you have a Hegel amplifier, adding the V10 to your system really is an excellent move. If you prefer a wide soundstage with great depth and an incredibly black background with as little noise as possible from a phono preamp, perhaps as ever you're likely to hear, then the Hegel V10 is certainly worth your consideration. As the first outing phono preamp in the company's history, you can rest assured that it does not sound like one. Hegel once again proved why their products are so coveted. Their engineering and design are simply class leading and not to be overlooked. Neutral presentation, wide soundstage, black background, and true instrument representation are all key sonic characteristics that you will find with a V10. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch, and I look forward to next time.